In late 2020, there was some buzzing on the internet about the Roman golden coin that had been sold for a staggering 2.7 million pounds or 3.1 million euros. What made the coin so special was not only its rarity, but its historical significance. Although there are similar silver coins, this coin is unique that it is one of only three such golden coins ever found. But what then sets it apart from other Roman golden coins? This is a story about the Brutus coins and their place in history. I am your host, Morten Eriksson. This is Ancient History. On the 15th of March, in the year of Julius Caesar's fifth and Marcus Antonius' first consulships, that is, in the year 44 BCE, Caesar, the dictator, was struck down by the members of a conspiracy as he was leaving the Senate meeting in Pompeius Theatre, located in what is today Largo di Torre Argentina in Rome, today more famous for its cat sanctuary. Among the conspirators, between 30 and 60 of them, who claimed to be acting for the well-being of the Roman Republic, were several men who formerly had been serving with Caesar, men that at some point had called themselves his friend. Caesar, however, was early on set on absolute power, and it is today believed among historians that just as the well-being of the Republic was one driving force behind the murder, so was envy or simple grudge. These were men who had seen their own position in Rome being diminished every time Caesar had taken a new step further up on the staircase of tyranny. Caesar did not, in fact, share power. During the civil war, the famous or infamous Marcus Junius Brutus and his brother and several others had come to change sides. Caesar's ambition was simply too much for the aristocrats of the Republic to stomach. So they conspired to get rid of Caesar the only way possible with dictators, in blood. In doing so, they wrote themselves into human history forever, with perhaps the most notorious regicide of all time. It turned out, however, that they had miscalculated the effects of the murder. It was not as easy to win the popular sentiment as they had expected. And while Marcus Antonius held a passionate funeral oration over Caesar, holding his bloody toga in his hands, the members of the conspiracy withdrew to safer quarters in Rome, not really knowing what to do. Within a short time, Caesar's adopted nephew, Octavianus, also had started to act, and soon Rome itself was once again engulfed in a civil war. By the summer of 42, while the consuls, Aemilius Lepidus and Monatius Plancus, stayed in the city. Many prominent republicans had left Rome along with the army. Among them were the Bruti brothers. While far from Rome, the murderers or liberators of the republic as they preferred to see themselves, needed ways to make propaganda. One such way for Brutus was to mint coins wearing insignia that would remind the receivers of the heroic acts on Edus Marciae. The army had with it a travelling mint. This was normal as armies needed to mint coins continuously to provide salary for the legionaries and other expenses. It is in the late summer of this year that Brutus starts to mint the coins bearing the symbols of Idus. Apart from the only three gold coins found, there are also about 80 silver denarii from the same period unearthed to this date. What then makes them so special? The coins carry three principal symbols that are directly connected to the murder of Julius Caesar. The backside of the coins show two daggers differing slightly in style. These are the murder weapons, pieces de la resistance if you wish, wielded by Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius Longinus on the 15th of March two years earlier. Cassius, by the way, was a senator who had fought Caesar during the civil war, but later had been pardoned by Caesar. This hadn't stopped him from being the driving co-conspirator together with Brutus. The differing form of the two blades symbolized the two men. 
although there is no way of knowing if the minted picture in any way resembles the actual daggers used, it is also not an unreasonable thought. They differ in the same way in different versions of the coins. We simply do not know. Between the two daggers is shown a small cap, a Peleus. The Peleus had been part of history in the ancient Mediterranean world. In Rome, however, it had become intricately connected to the symbolism of a freedom. Over time, here, it had become a symbol of Libertas, the Roman goddess of liberty. When in ancient Rome a slave was being proclaimed free, one part of the ritual was to shave his head and on it place the pileum. For the conspirators, this was then intended as symbol to remind the people that they had been freed from the tyrant's slavery. As a side note, this was not the only time the Peleus would come to appear on Roman coins. Almost 200 years later, the emperor Antoninus Pius had coins minted picturing Libertas holding the Peleus in her right hand. Under these symbols, there are two words, Aed Mar, which should be read like Aedibus Martis, or the Edis of March. This short statement thus almost became a mantra. In fact, it reminds a bit of the verse, Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Although in this case, of course, it was the 15th of March. On the obverse side of the coin, the owner is met by yet another picture, and another message. Here we can see the detailed face of Brutus himself. He is portraited as a short-haired man with what was uncommon during this period, a short, well-trimmed beard. In another coin minted by Brutus, one can see Brutus's two relatives, Lucius Junius Brutus, one of the founders of the Roman Republic, deposer of a king, and Gaius Sevilius Ahala, who had killed a tyrant in the making. Both are portraited bearded. In showing himself in a beard, Brutus was thus showing himself, so to speak, out of the fashion of the day, but in style with liberty, fulfilling the duty of his family name. Until recently, it had been taboo, even unlawful, to strike coins with the living man's face on them. Julius Caesar, however, in his vanity, had seen to it that he had been granted the status of dictator perpetuo, that is, dictator without an end date, or as we say, for life. As such, he had also acquired the right to mint coins with his own resemblance on them. In fact, the first coins bearing the image of Caesar were struck just three months before his assassination. Having done so, he broke tradition and in the eyes of his opponents appeared yet another bit like a king. It is sometimes said that these coins were what killed Caesar. The coins themselves portraited Caesar crowned in laurels. On the reverse side, the goddess Venus Victoris is supporting victory in her right hand. To state himself as an opponent, Brutus went ahead and engraved his own portrait on his own coins. Because of this, the lingering image of Brutus appears somewhat ironic. In confronting Caesar, the dictator with his face on a coin, Brutus had now pictured himself as the lone killer of Caesar, the lone savior of Rome, where there in fact had been at least 60 co-conspirators. Circumventing the portrait, we can see a few abbreviations. On the left, the words El Pliet Sest, honoring the magistrate and the man in charge of the minting, Lucius Pletorius Cestianus. Above the head of Brutus, his name, Brut or Brutus, and on his right side, the words Imp for Imperator, nothing else, which Brutus had been proclaimed by his troops probably sometime during the year 42. These coins were struck in the late summer or beginning of autumn 42 BCE, which meant that in a few months, just like Caesar, Brutus would be dead. Having got notice of the outcome of the conflict between Octavianus and Marcus Antonius, Brutus and Cassius turned their army towards Rome. Hearing this, Octavianus and Marcus Antonius made a hasty peace and sent their combined forces to meet Brutus and Cassius. The four armies fought two battles outside Philippi in northern Greece. 
On the 3rd of October, Brutus defeated the legions of Octavianus, but in turn Cassius' forces were beaten by the legions of Marcus Antonius. Cassius decided to commit suicide. Brutus was now left alone in the war. Twenty days later, on the 23rd, a second battle was fought which Brutus lost. He fled to the nearby mountains with four of his legions, knowing that his destiny was now spent and that he would be killed if he was taken prisoner. He thrust himself upon his own sword and ended his life. After all, the Brutus coins came to little effect. Due to the disaster at Philippi and the defeat and suicides of both Cassius and Brutus, time had run out for the Republican cause. In the end, Octavianus would grab sole power in Rome under the name Caesar. Nonetheless, the Brutus coins are a rare and extraordinary window into the theatre that was to be the end of the Roman Republic. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please push that like button or even consider subscribing to my channel or join me at Patreon.